Exercise 3. Modeling a hair dryer. This exercise is similar to exercise 1, where we modeled a remote control. We'll start with a basic shape and then push and pull it to achieve our design. We will also use extrusions to make the handle of the hair dryer, and then we'll introduce one new command that can be used to add detail to part of the model, the insert edge command. Again, we'll start with a reference image. To place the image in the scene, run the Rhino picture frame command and add the picture. This time instead of a box primitive, we'll start with a cylinder primitive, since the main part of the hair dryer is cylindrical. Again, we'll try to keep the number of faces to a minimum, in this case, five vertical faces and eight around faces. We'll also add X symmetry, since this is a symmetric model. When placing the primitive in the scene, you'll notice that we're only allowed to have a vertical primitive. We'll just roughly place it and then move it into place with the translate and rotate manipulators. You can double click the rotate manipulator to type in an exact 90 degree rotation. With the primitive in place, we'll push and pull on the vertex, edge, and face grips to shape the primitive to the contours of the reference image. Now, to make the handle, we'll extrude some face grips. You can tell that as we laid out our topology, we have edge loops that line up with the edges of the handle. This was on purpose because it means that we have face grips in the right locations to extrude the surface downwards. After each extrusion, we will push and pull on the grips to shape the model as we go. There's one trick to extruding when we have symmetry. If we rotate the model into perspective view, you'll notice that we're extruding faces on either side of the symmetric line. It's important that we select faces on both sides even though we have symmetry. If we only select faces on one side and then make an extrusion, it will create a valley in between our extruded faces on each side. So to this point we've created a nice smooth T-splines hairdryer. Now let's tighten up our design and add some details. To get a tighter design, I need more grips to shape the surface. I'd like to pull the surface around at the front and the back of the hairdryer. To see why I need more grips, let's look at how NURBS curves work. A NURBS curve is defined by its control points. If there are a few control points in an area, the curve is very smooth. If control points are placed closer together, the curve is tighter. These same principles apply to T-splines. If we take a look at the control points of this T-spline, we can see that there are not very many. If we add more control points, then we'll get a tighter curve at the edge. One way to add more control points is the insert edge command. There are two options, simple and exact. Simple will change the surface, while exact will add an edge without changing the shape of the surface. In this instance, we want to change the shape of the surface to make it tighter, so we will use the simple option. To place an edge, select the edges where you want the new edge to start and stop. In this case, we want the new edge to go all the way around our shape, so I will do a crossing selection of all these edges. A crossing selection is done by drawing a box from right to left, and everything that is partially contained inside the box is selected. Now I will either add the new edge freehand, or I can type a value of where I want it to be as a percentage of the distance along these crossing edges. I'll do this one freehand. After this edge is inserted, I will turn on control points again. I now have enough grips to add more detail to my model. I'll repeat this process on the front of the hairdryer. Here I will add two new edge loops. Finally, I'll add some more edges on the top of the hairdryer. This time, instead of adding edges in a complete loop, I'll just add a few edges. I'll do this in the same way, just selecting the edges where I want the new detail to start and stop. This gives me more detail where I need it that transitions into the rest of my model smoothly. This is a patented T-Splines feature and in fact is where T-Splines gets its name from. 
the T points at the end of this new edge. I can now move these new edges to finish shaping my model.